And she's a great vamp in the movie. It's like Feet of Era. And she discovers that she's threatened by the arrival of, of a great theater star, Madeline Astarte, who's come to Hollywood to sort of take her place as, as a rival uh, vamp on the screen. And the uh, Madeline Astarte comes to Lacondaise's house and they have their big confrontation. Now you've really gone too far. <laughs> you imagine yourself quite the cunning little fixin. You have delusions that you can conquer me, though I have always found you vulgar. I have never taken you for a fool. Until now. Hollywood is my town! Ha! For centuries, you have been an albatross around my neck, first in Rome. I claimed as my bride the most beautiful of the Caligula's courtesans. She was mine until you stole her away to China. And there was the nun in the Dark Ages, who became my personal slave, stolen once again. Oh, and we all know what treachery you conspired against me during the Spanish Inquisition, but I triumphed. And did I plot revenge? No. Then, in the 16th century, I had as my mistress the most desired of all of Queen Elizabeth's ladies in waiting. But you, the ever present vulture, snatched her off to the colonies even then! Did I choose revenge? No. And why? Because I am a great lady. <laughs> I conduct myself with dignity and grandeur, whilst you roll around in the gutter, parading your <laughs> stage and calling it acting. You've got as much glamour as a common street whore, and now, madame, you have gone too far. I am the queen of vampires, and I will never, never relinquish my hold on Hollywood. Are you thrilled? <laughs> As you desire to relive the past, shall we travel even further back in time? Many centuries ago, back in the days of the Bible, <laughs> there was a young girl, a mere child of fourteen, a lovely girl, full of high spirits. A lottery was held to choose a sacrificial victim for the dreaded succubus. As fate would have it, she chose the black stone of death. She was dragged by soldiers to the cave of the creature, and there left to her desecration. The monster emerged, and there, under a godless sky, the creature dug its teeth into the girl's fair flesh. Having gorged itself, the monster retired to its cave, leaving the girl's body to be picked and devoured as carrion. But the girl did not die! <laughs> the monster, in its fury, did not even notice that all the while it was sucking the girl's blood, the child herself had lodged her teeth into a vein of the monster, and her terror she drank. More and more she filled herself with the creature's fluid. And there, on the peach rocky point, left to rot like a piece of old meat, she did not die. But was transformed. Transformed into one of the undead, never to find eternal rest, but to stalk the earth forever in such of a victim. Look at me! I am that girl! And I demand the death of the succubus. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Carl Burke and Jerry Hawkins.